In this video, how just 200 milliliters a day of this game-changing non-protein calorie supplement can dramatically improve your kidney function. are amazing results you seem to have made a, a remarkable recovery Catherine here I'm a doctor of natural medicine and today we talk about the number one most crucial step toward better kidney health reducing protein intake and here's where this innovative supplement comes in it's designed to make your diet work According to the latest study on this topic, this supplement addresses what's probably the biggest challenges of the renal diet. We will see how it does this in a moment, but first, I want to share something truly inspiring. Let me read a comment from one of you. I have been on a plant-based for a year now and supplementing B12, CoQ10 and my GFR has increased from 30 last year. Now it's back at 69. Now this is from one of my followers here on Double Okini. Her name is Cecil Rodriguez. So first of all, thank you very much Cecil for sharing your story with us and huge congratulations on your improvement. We keep fighting. You more than doubled your kidney function and if that wasn't already amazing enough, you're now back in stage 2 of kidney disease with your GFR in the normal range. Absolutely phenomenal! How did she achieve this transformation, you ask? Well, I believe she's been following me here for a while and I'm not just saying this because she's one of the regulars in my comment section. Also because she knows very well what she's doing. In fact, she is not just managing her protein intake with the plant-based diet. She also went one step farther and she started to take supplements such as vitamin B12 and CoQ10. Why is that important, you ask? Because these supplements are really helpful in managing some of the risks associated both with CKD and with a low-protein diet in particular. So, this is what I want to talk about today. How to make a low-protein diet work without risks. Because balancing your protein intake isn't just important. It can be a game-changer for CKD. But to do it safely, you need a strategy to reduce protein without letting the lack of protein harm your health. How do we do this, you ask? Well, this is what this study titled, Proteins Can't Live With Them can't live without them literally just found out okay that's not the actual title of the study though won't that make for a best seller i mean protein and your kidneys an impossible romance better than romeo and juliet but instead they titled it Effects of a low protein nutritional formula with dietary counseling in older adults with chronic kidney disease stages 3 to 5. A randomized controlled trial. Wow! Catchy, right? Rolls of the tongue like a brick. And if you are still awake after reading this title, I will tell you immediately that despite the title, this very recent study is extremely interesting for us because reducing protein intake is a must for people with kidney disease. No doubt about it. Ask Cecil, ask the many other subscribers that improve. They are all following a renal diet that limits protein one way or another. In fact, in many cases, once you drastically cut most sources of animal protein from your diet, you can start to improve, you know, foods including meat such as pork, beef, chicken, turkey and duck, but also eggs, fish and dairy products such as milk, yogurt and cheese. Once these are gone, your kidneys are going to be better. But, of course, removing protein from the diet comes with a risk. Malnutrition, which is bad. This happens when the body breaking down muscles and other tissues to get the protein it needs. 
A lot of people are worried about this. Will I lose my muscles if I stop eating protein? They ask. Don't I need protein to survive? They ask. And of course, these concerns are perfectly legit. For once, losing muscle mass doesn't just mean losing strength. It also means losing bone density and a higher risk for unwanted outcomes, such as an increased risk for loss of life. So yeah, you need a certain amount of protein in order to survive. You really can't survive without it. It's back to ribeye steak with butter as a side dish then? Well, no, I mean, unless you want your kidneys sending you hate me, probably ribeye is not the best idea. Trust me, internal organs can hold a grudge. So, is this an impossible problem? Are people with kidney disease asked to choose between their kidney health and their whole body health? Well, not really. Actually, the aim of the studies we are going to look at today is proving the exact opposite. That CKD patients can stave off malnutrition by actually decreasing the percentage of calories they get from protein. Yes, science is very clear on this. Most CKD patients eat too much protein, not too little, even when following a renal diet. And guys, this is actually a good Thing. Yes, it turns out we're all overachievers in the protein department. If only that enthusiasm is transferred to exercising daily. Anyway, the goal of the study we are looking at today is finding ways for CKD patients to consume less protein and still avoid the risk of malnutrition. There are various strategies that could be adopted, including the innovative supplements that were used in this study. So let's take a look at the supplement. They call this a non-protein calorie supplement. So the question is, what supplements can be used to avoid malnutrition and protect kidney function? There are actually three main ways to achieve this goal and all of them have worked in medical literature. So yeah, three ways like a trilogy. Think of it as the Lord of the Kidneys, but with fewer elves and more lab results. Let's start with the supplement used in the most recent study. So the aim of this study was finding a way to avoid malnutrition in older adults with CKD in all the stages. Remember what I was saying about loss of muscle mass? Yeah, that's called malnutrition. So in this study, the goal was making sure even the most frail kidney patients were not losing muscle mass when following a low-protein, plant-based renal diet. So they divided the candidates in two groups, the test subjects, those taking the supplement, and the control group, those not taking the supplement. Now, this is important. Both the test subjects and the control group were on a low-protein diet. This is a very recent study, less than a year old. And what this means is that all the patients were already following a renal diet, all right? Yeah, they don't use patients not following a renal diet as a control anymore today because we already know that patients following a renal diet are going to be better. They used to do this in the past in studies about other supplements, but it was hard to tell if the improvement the test subjects were having were due to the renal diet or the supplementation. So in this study, everyone was on the same culinary adventure, exploring the exciting world of steamed vegetables and, well, more steamed vegetables. The only difference was the supplement that test subjects only were taking. This is called Fresubin Renal and it's a very simple supplement. It's calories in liquid form with very little protein. In other words, it's like a smoothie but stripped down to the bare essentials. So lots of calories, little protein content, and they also added many of those nutrients most CKD patients need the most. Iron, magnesium, vitamin B12, and other B vitamins, vitamin D3, and more. But is this gonna work, you ask? Is adding 200 milliliters or 400 calories that are almost protein-free but contain vitamins, fats, and carbs really going to save CKD patients from dialysis and to decrease their risk of loss of life? Well, yes, as this study proves with the right patient, it can. In fact, as we can see, after just three months, test subjects 
were better. They weren't suffering from signs of physical deterioration anymore. So less muscle loss, less anemia, less bone density loss, and less risk of loss of life. Now guys, please keep in mind that I'm talking about this supplement from Fresenius just because they recently published a study about it. This is not the only non-protein calorie supplement available. Alternatives include nephro, renal cal, suplina, and more. All of these could be life-saving in the right scenario. So what's the catch, you ask? Well, actually, there is one thing you need to know before even thinking about using any of these supplements. In fact, not all patients will benefit from them. And we will see why in a moment. Before that, there is another comment I want to read you. Okay guys, I started this video with one amazing comment, but there is another one from my last video that I just have to share. I believe it's from one of my patients. Her YouTube name is Flora Yuga Uga. Apologies if I'm mispronouncing your name. And she says, the consultation went well with you. I am free of stage four now. Thank you. And that's all. That's the whole comment. Wow. Just wow. That's absolutely incredible. But let me tell you something. This isn't the first time I received a comment like this. And every single time I'm left dumbfounded. Don't get me wrong. I'm extremely happy when one of my patients makes an improvement. Of course, I am. Especially an improvement as massive as moving from stage 4 back to stage 3 of CKD. And I'm so grateful that Flora decided to share her progress here on the channel. I mean, it's a great feeling knowing I've done a good job. But what's upsetting about this comment, you ask? Isn't it just a glowing review? Well, yes, Flora is happy and she left me a public thank you. But here's the thing. This is an Amazon, guys. I'm not out here selling a patented kidney repair method with a promise of taking you from stage 4 to stage 3 in one magical one-hour counseling session. That would be insane. If I could do that, you'd see me outside the Nobel Prize Committee's headquarters banging on their doors yelling, Hey, I cured kidney disease. Where's my Nobel Prize? And where's my statue? But you don't see me doing that, do you? Because that's not how any of this works. Of course, the ultimate goal is improvement. That's why we're all here, right? And yes, I aim to make an impact from the very first consultation. That's why I always give my patients as much actionable information as possible right from the start. I design personalized diets, provide supplement recommendations, and give you the tools you need to make real changes. But let's be real, improvements like Flora's don't happen overnight. Moving from stage 4 back to stage 3, that's huge, a real achievement worth celebrating. When a patient improves like this, it's not just a nice result. It's a monumental achievement that reflects a lot of hard work, dedication, and persistence. Kidney disease doesn't just get better because of one change. It takes effort, discipline, and consistency on top of the right guidance. So if you've made progress like Flora has, take a moment to truly celebrate it. Don't take it for granted. It's proof that you've taken control of your health and fought back against something that most people think it's impossible to reverse. And that's worth shouting from the rooftops. So keep going, keep pushing, and keep proving what's possible. Let's make it happen. And thank you again, Flora Yuga, for leaving the comment. And congratulations again for the improvement. Okay, guys, with that said, let's get back to the life-saving supplement. Because as I was saying, the benefits some patients could have from these are huge. I'm not just talking about, you know, protecting your kidneys, but also about reducing the risk for anemia, bone loss, and more. But how did they achieve this, you ask? Well, let's take a look at how this non-protein calorie supplement is made. 
So looking at the nutritional values, we can see this has lots of calories and they also added many of those nutrients most CKD patients need the most. Iron, magnesium, vitamin B12 and other B vitamins, vitamin D3 and more. It's like they threw in everything but the kitchen sink and well, they had to. But the most important part is this. This supplement only has 3 grams of protein per 200 calories. That's very little protein. Just enough to, you know, make sure a patient that can only eat this supplement doesn't suffer malnutrition. In fact, this supplement is also made for patients that cannot eat normal food due to their health. So they put in the bare minimum protein in order for the patient to avoid malnutrition. I mean, 3 grams of protein per 200 calories kilocalories is very little it's about half the protein per calorie in potatoes all right plus it has all the micronutrients you need and this makes it ideal for those patients that need to increase their caloric intake so if you are someone who is struggling to keep their weight on this could really help you so the question is do you need this supplement well, the thing here is that I don't really recommend this supplement to, well, to most kidney patients. This supplement is only going to help those people who are really having a hard time getting enough calories every day. Those patients that really cannot eat enough because they have nausea. Those patients that are still losing weight despite following all the instructions given to, you know, eat more food. But on the other hand, if you have diabetes or if you need to lose weight, this supplement is not for you because of all the liquid calories it contains. Remember that liquid calories like those you will get from juices or sodas and well, these kind of supplements are not satiating at all. So now the question is, what to do to still have the benefits this supplement can offer, namely avoiding muscle loss, bone density loss, and anemia, but without the extra calories? Well, the main thing you should look into in this case are keto analogs. So keto analogs are different from the supplement we have just seen because they have no problem at all in them, nor calories. Keto analogs are a special type of amino acids that patients are supposed to be prescribed when they follow a low protein diet. Why you ask? Because they contain amino acids, the building block of protein and of the human body, but without any nitrogen. Nitrogen is one of the reasons why protein is so bad for the kidneys. So we remove the nitrogen from the amino acids and we can reduce the risk for malnutrition without having to add more calories. Think of keto analogs as the decaf coffee of amino acids, all the flavor, none of the buzz except in this case the buzz is what damages the kidneys so there are a few brands that sell these amino acids including Fresenius and albutrix and they are not cheap but if you are on the renal diet and want to make sure you are not risking malnutrition keto analogs can be extremely helpful but again, this only help if you are already getting enough calories, all right? If you are losing weight and you don't need to lose weight, keto analogs are not going to help. Now, guys, for most patients, however, the problem is not getting enough protein. The problem is getting too much protein. So let's talk about the reason why most CKD patients cannot improve. One of the most authoritative studies about kidney disease seems to have found the answer to this question. This paper has outlined what can be considered the number one problem with the renal diet. As we can see, for most patients, it's difficult to control daily protein intake. So what this means is that it's a lot easier for CKD patients to eat too much protein even when following a renal diet than to eat too little protein even when under the guidance of registered dietitians. So this is a problem because as we have seen, increasing protein intake above a certain threshold does not protect from malnutrition. It only makes kidney disease progress faster. The solution, adding low protein staple foods to your diet. And if you want to know more about low protein staple foods, my video up here is for you and this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless you all. Ciao, ciao.